Hey, what's up guys, Chris here. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you how to build this contacts list API using the Django REST framework. We are going to create our register endpoint so users are going to be able to sign up for our application. Then we are going to be able to configure our application authentication scheme to use JWT. So when users log in, they can be able to get JWT tokens that they can use to access protected endpoints, like I will show you. So basically we will set up a register endpoint and then the login endpoint to which a user will get a token and then they can use a token to access routes like creating a contact and then viewing individual contacts for a specific user. After that, we are going to be able to document our API using Swagger UI. So we're going to create this view right here, which is actually incredible that if you have like people working on a front end, so you create an API like this and you have people working on an Android app or an iOS app or Angular React or <laughs> whatever it may be, they can always come in here and inspect to see like everything you have on the back end. So if someone is working like on a login feature, like on an android app or on react they can be able to see that oh they need a username they need like a password and then they can see that the validations you enforce on the back end such that they can enforce something similar on the front end so same thing for like the registration you can see what the user needs to supply from the front end you can see if they are required or not so yeah it's, it's it's really a big thing to have for an api then with this kind of thing you can even do away with needing clients like postman because here you can actually come in and you can try out the API. So if you have like if someone working on the front end, you can come in and try the API. For example, now let's try creating a user. Register the user like christstudio.gmail.com. That's our password. And then we click execute. You can see that the server actually responds. So you can see that now we see a user already exists. So we can change this. So let's say we now supply a username like string four five six seven, and then execute. Oh, the email is also taken, sorry. So let me use a different email. So when I execute it, now you can see that we get a 201 and we get the new user object. Right now, when a user like creates an account, they can like log in. So you, they can also test out the login endpoint by choosing try it out. And then here, of course, now we need the username and the password. So I can eliminate all these other ones. Okay, so right now, if I try to authenticate with uh, like a user that doesn't exist and I try to execute, you can see that we get invalid credentials and we get 401. If I use a user that exists, then I execute, you can see that we get a 200 and then we get the user sent back to us and then this token that we can use. So right now, when a user goes to, let me actually collapse this. Right now, when a user goes to get contacts, and they try to execute it. So let's try execute. You can see that we get an error saying that we didn't provide authentication credentials. So Swagger UI actually also provides us a way to even test with JWT. So right here I could come in and really do everything I would do in something like Postman and then authorize. So this is equivalent to a user signing in. And now we can, now we can try accessing this endpoint. For example, if I click execute, you can see that now I get a 200 and then an empty list. So right now you can see that we'll have like an endpoint to show a list of, of contacts and then we have one to create a contact. For example, when you come in here, should, when you click like try it out, you can actually see everything that that the server would expect, that, expect us to give it. So right here, let me create some contacts. So let's say country code is like 234. I don't know which country that is. The phone number is like 67, like that one. Then the first name, let's say Alan Jor. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to you if you called Alan Jor. Then the picture URL. So here we need to provide like a valid URL. So if you have like a front end, it will be responsible for sending it to you. So let me get a picture here. And then they can click execute. And then you can see that we get a 201, meaning that it was created. And then you get the object sent again. So let's go ahead and create some other ones. Let's just change this. The picture can be similar. And then you see, we basically get a new response. So now if we go to, to the endpoint to get, so previously we had an empty list. So now if we click execute, you can see that we get our objects. All right, so it's gonna be fun to build. So we also have, like you can edit, delete, so you can like change the favorites. 
So right now you can come in and add a, con a contact to the favorites using the patch one. You can put to create and to create the object. You can delete the contact, so which is pretty cool. So right here, you can see that the documentation actually provides us all our like model information. And of course, this is it gets all this information from Serializer. So this is what the views that give the data to the user only know. So of course, now the Serializer works with the database and the view. So it's like a middleman. You can see, so if you have someone on the front end can easily know like what to, to expect from the server. Okay, so it's gonna be fun to build. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm right here in my terminal. So if you're on Windows, you can get your command line because now we are going to install some stuff. So first thing we are going to need to do is set up our environment. So right here, let me see where I am by doing pwd. So I'm going to create a folder here, so mkdr. I'm gonna call it contact app. Now I can cd into contact app. And then here I want to create a virtual environment. So what a virtual environment allows us to do is pretty much encapsulate all our dependencies of our project into one container such so that we can easily move the project around and be able to run it easily on other machines. If you don't have pp and v, you can install it by using pip. So you can do like pip3, install pipenv. So once you do that, for example, now if I try it, you can see that I already have it, but if you don't, then it's gonna be able to install for you. So let me clear this one out. So go ahead and install it. So now, right here, now I can use PPNV to create a virtual environment. So the way I can do that, I can do PPNV, share. Okay, so you can see that it's creating a virtual environment for this project and then it creates a pip file for the project. So now if I do ls, you can see that we have a pip file. So this is gonna be the one to keep track of our application dependencies. If you're familiar with JavaScript, this would be like your package.json, but on the section of dependencies. Okay, so, so you can see it creates a pip file and then activates our virtual environment. Okay, so now let's use ppnv to install Django into our project. So ppnv install Django. Okay, so that will go ahead and install Django. So now that that's done, now we can use Django to create our Django project. So Django comes with a tool called Django Admin. So write Django-admin, start project, then you give it a project name. So I'm going to call ours contacts API. Okay, so if we do an LS, you can see that that creates for us a uh, contacts API. So right right now, what I want to do is move these environment files into the main project folder and then work inside their directory. So now I'm gonna do mv, so it's gonna be pip file. So I'm gonna move it into contact api dot, then I'm gonna do the same thing for pip file dot lock. Do that, so if, I do, if we do an ls, you can see that the files have been moved. If we cd into contacts api, and do an ls, you can see that now we have the project, the manage.py, and then the our, our environment file. So this makes it easy for us to work with it. So now I'm gonna open up the, the project in VS Code by doing code dot. So if code dot doesn't open up VS Code, then you can actually do like file, open, then you open your project. Okay, so right here, you put up the terminal for VS Code. And then you see it's, it's even, it even realizes the virtual environment and then comes through. So now if we run Python manage.py run server. Okay, so if we run Python dash dash version. Oh, you can see it's using another Python. So here we need to run this using Python 3. So run python3 manage.py run server so that my port is already in use so if you want to use another port you can actually use like 7500 so after i run server you can add there another port and then run it so you can see that now it runs on port 7500 and if i click there you can see that we have django up and running so in the next video we are going to go ahead and set up the registration i will see you guys next time so by the way if you're new to the channel please subscribe because that's the way you can always get notified when i post new videos i'll see you in the next one bye